Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting red nose truck and I'm going to be sipping on some hot cocoa and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. You can certainly switch up the size if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, cobalt blue, green oxide, deep yellow, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I will use for drawing later, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and piece of chalk and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our sky and our road. I'm going to use my large bristle brush. I'm going to be using black, brown, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to be painting my sky first. I'm going to have it darker at the top. It's going to come lighter at the bottom. I'm going to be doing it about a quarter of the way down my canvas. And then we're going to paint ourselves a big road that looks like it's going coming from the hill. It's going to be small up here and then big down here. So we're going to start on the sky. I'm going to pick up black, brown, and white at the same time. And I'm going to pick up about equal parts of those three colors. And I'm going to start up at the top. I am only going to come down about a quarter of the way down my canvas. So you could, I suppose, mark your canvas. If this is about your halfway point, just mark it maybe a quarter of the way and then do the same thing on the other side if you need that stopping point, which sometimes I do. So <laughs> that helps me with my process. And I'm going to load my brush with a little bit more black brown and white and then as I feel like I'm about halfway down that sky I will start to get it lighter and lighter but I'm going to make sure that that top of that sky is pretty darn dark because when we go to put the um, snow on and stuff it'll be really have a lot of atmospheric dimension if the top of it is nice and dark. Plus I think Santa operates in the nighttime anyway so <laughs> this will allude to the correct time of day that he typically is delivering his presence in. So I just started adding some extra white to my brush and I'm not going to pick up any more of the black and the brown. I'm just going to pick up some white as I travel down to the bottom of this um, sky. And you could certainly make it browner if you wanted to or grayer or lighter or darker. You have as much fun with the intensity on this sky as you wanted it. If you want him to be working during the daytime, you can certainly add blue into your sky as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers for my road, and then I will paint my road. So my road is gonna start just below my, um, my sky. So I'm loading my brush back up with the black, brown, and white. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a marker in through here that's just maybe about a quarter of an inch wide. Then I'm going to come down to the bottom of my canvas at about the halfway point, give myself a little bit of a marker right about here. And then over on this left hand side, I'm going to come up maybe about three inches or so. I'm going to connect 
this marker to here and here. So I'm just reloading my brush with the black, brown, and white. And I'm just gonna give this as if it's a nice hill, just kind of rolling down in through here. And then it's gonna just kind of fade off into that marker in through there. Gonna reload, start nice and slender up in through here. And then this is going to travel down in through here, give it the implication that it is in fact a hill that kind of just comes and swoops down in through this direction and then I'm just going to color in the entire hill using black brown and white I'm just going to kind of alternate my colors as opposed to always picking up all three of the colors at the same time I'm just gonna like I just picked up brown now I'll pick up a little bit of black now I'll pick up a little bit of white and I just kind of keep adding those colors so this way, again, I get a nice good diversity. It's pretty dark, so that's gonna look great as the pavement on the road. And I'm going in the direction that I feel the road would be traveling. So I started up here and I just am swooping it down and then just gonna blend these colors in. They don't have to be a solid color. I like mine to have that diversity in the um, in the appearance so you can certainly have fun with how light or dark that you want yours to be and then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step and you can see I'm not terribly concerned about my edges being perfect because I know that we're gonna have snow around the edges so I don't necessarily need them to be perfect and then I'm going to just wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the ground. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, blue, and white. So how I'm gonna do this is I want it to just look like real fluffy kind of snow. I don't want it to go all the way white because we're gonna be having snow falling. So I want to be able to see that white snow falling. So I'm going to make a conscious effort to not make this totally white. And I want it to look a little colder than the sky per se, or the road. So that's where I'm going to be using a little bit of blue as well. That'll make it look colder. I am also going to have little um, hills at the top. So I'm going to be making this look like it's got a couple of little roly poly hills and I'll have the snow the lightest at the top there. So because I am going to be crossing over into my sky, I do recommend that you have your paint is dry in your sky by this point. So, you know, this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and that'll get it dry for you. So how I'm gonna do this is I will start with all four of those colors on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna be applying it with a very kind of chaotic rubbing type of circular brush stroke. But when I get to the top of the hills, I'll, I'll slow down a little bit more. I'll give it a little bit more care and attention. I'll get these little roly poly hills to go. And when I'm near my road, I'll slow down a little bit too and just make sure it looks like it's entering or being neighbors to the road in a nice natural way. So I'm gonna put a little bit of all four colors on my brush. So I've got a little bit of blue, a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white. And it's gonna look very chaotic and messy when you first start just to try and get these colors on here. You don't need it super duper dark. So I did just pick up a little bit more white paint. You can always adjust these colors however you see fit, but I like using them at the same time or you know, starting to use them at the same time in this type of process because it kind of throws chaos into the equation and it really just allows it to naturally happen in an organic kind of way. So when I do it that way, once it's on there, now I can start just enhancing and kind of filling in the blanks and not over blending, which is gonna give me these light spots and dark spots, which is gonna make it look more natural. So if I really went into it with a, oh, I'm gonna just do blue now, and I'm just gonna do brown now, and now I'm just gonna do you know, black and white, I might have a very systematic looking landscape. I want there to be lots of peaks and valleys and make it look almost like it's rolling and that there's, you know, 
little spots of snow that have accumulated in certain areas so this way helps me to to do that and once I've got the majority on in here this is looking pretty good I'll do that section in a minute but I'm gonna just kind of get this to meet the road I know I've got a big truck going on in through here so I'm not terribly concerned about it being perfect in this vicinity but I do want to make sure that it goes all the way to the road so you can just kind of scoot your brush in through that area if you want you can put a little bit more white on there or you know do whatever you you feel is going to make it look the most natural as it's as it's hitting that road maybe there's these little piles of snow just at the edge of the road in through there and I'm going to start working on my on my hills so I think I'm going to just put maybe white a little bit of brown maybe a touch of blue to get them in place so I'm going to have this one kind of coming up a little bit like this and maybe rolling down I do know that I need to have all of my hills within my sky so at any point that I'm doing this I know that I need to bring that paint all the way up into the sky and maybe overlap it a little bit in some areas so this I just put a little bit extra white on there making sure that I've got um, a lighter edge to it and then I'll just get it to to blend in with the rest of these and I'm gonna have some trees going on I'm gonna have a lots of snow lots of other information so you don't again have to get these to be perfect if you, but if you want them to look like they've got some sort of um, dimension to them this type of process will will help you to do that and then I'm just kind of softening them up a little bit I have this little space up in through here that needs to be attended to so just getting making sure that I have enough paint up in through there and if you want it to look like there's little hills overlapping each other you can just put that lighter area in front but again I know that I'm gonna have a big huge bag of presents that's gonna be overlapping this area as well maybe this should go a little bit lighter up in through here but I still want to see the difference between the sky and my and my hill so just kind of being mindful of of what's happening over in through here and then I'm going to go ahead and do this um, this bottom area in through here so just reloading my brush with a little bit of brown black blue and white gonna approach it in the same kind of chaotic manner down here just kind of getting this on here in a real messy fashion maybe a little bit more blue just to emphasize the coldness of the snow and then I'll just kind of utilize maybe a little bit of white to, to bring it all the way to my to my road edge in through here. And again, I don't want it to go all the way white because I know that I'm going to be having the snow falling in a little bit. So this is really just kind of giving me the, um, the backdrop for all of the other information that I'm gonna have in a little bit. And so this is gonna be maybe the little, the little piling of the snow next to the to the road in through here so just getting this to find its way to that road's edge and then we are going to be utilizing our chalk for the next step so once you've got your ground all nice and completed you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to you can take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline of our truck. I'm gonna use my chalk and I'm gonna give you a couple of dots and markers and we'll connect those and hopefully by the time we're done we have something that resembles a truck. <laughs> so I'm gonna, um, again, use my chalk. I'm gonna direct you into where I'm making my markers and then we'll connect them and, and it'll be fun. So the first marker that I'm gonna make is in this vicinity over here. So in order to find where that is, I'm gonna kind of go from the top and bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna eyeball about the halfway point, and then I'm gonna go about halfway between that and the end of my canvas. So this will be about a quarter of the way over from the right and about halfway up and down my canvas. Then I'm gonna come directly below that, about three and a half inches or so, make myself another little dot. Then I'm gonna come straight over from this to the left, if this is about the center of my canvas, I'm about two inches to the left of that, and then maybe about an inch and a half below that. So this will be my third marker. And then my fourth marker is gonna be right about here. So 
you can, if you come straight over from the left, from this marker, you're going to stop about three inches, two to three inches from the left hand side, and then just go up about an inch and a half. Mine, ironically, is right on my road slash snow line, but yours might not end up right there. And then I'm going to go up from that about two inches and give myself another marker. So this marker should be lower than this one, maybe even about almost halfway between these two or just maybe about an inch lower than this one. So then I'm just going to connect my dots. So I'm going to connect these two, these two, these two, these two, and then these last two in through here. So this is my base kind of shape for the body of my truck. I'm going to give myself the top part of the truck. So this is going to include the hood and then the cab area. So I'm going to go a little bit to the right of here. I would say about two inches, inch and a half to two inches and straight up from there. This is going to um, be the corner of the cab where this will be the side of the cab and then this is going to be the front of the cab. So this is kind of the corner of it. Then I'm going to go almost halfway between here and here, make myself another marker and I'm going to connect these two with an arcing line. So something like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from this um, corner here. I'm going to go to the right about an inch somewhere in through there and I'm going to connect here to here with another arcing line but this line is only going to go about halfway up the height of this one so something like this this is the hood of my truck something like that and then I'm going to go about half the distance between these two to right about here and I'm going to make myself another arcing line that's going to end up in through here so this is going to be the um, top part of the cab so something like this and it's kind of on the flatter side it doesn't have to be super duper round um, doesn't have to be really tall and then I'm going to make myself two more arcing motions these will be the front two windows of for the windshield they're going to be at about the same height as this one but the one on the right will be a little bit wider than the one on the left to indicate that the truck is tipped a little bit. So what I'm going to do so I can make sure that I do that is I'm going to find my center point between these two. So that's about right here. And then I'm going to go a little bit to the left. That will allow me to separate and make the left one a little bit smaller than the right one. And then I just make myself a couple of arcs. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a um, curved line in through here which will be the housing for the light uh, for the front headlight I'm going to give myself a little bit of a bump in through here which will be for my bumper and I'm going to go onto the back of my vehicle in through here and give myself another little um, marker in through here this is going to be the the um, uh, the wheel area the housing that goes around the wheel I'm going to give myself two wheels now so right in through here I'm going to give myself a circular type object I'm going to go cross over my line down in through here so I can get it to go into the the ground a little bit and then and this is about I would say half the distance from the end of the truck to where the window is so that's about as far over as I brought that one my next wheel is going to kind of be lined up with this um, marker in through here and it's going to appear a little bit bigger than this one. And I'm going to have it stopping a little bit shy of the corner of this, um, the corner of the truck right here. So I'm going to do, this is going to be something like this. And then of course I'm going to bring it down into the ground as well. And then I need to make myself a bag, a big Santa bag in the back. So mine is just going to be filled with a whole bunch of toys and presents and stuff like that. So I'm going to make it really big and it's going to be really lumpy and bumpy. I'm going to have it coming up about this far in the back of the um, cab of the truck and it's going to come out from about here. So I went into the, the um, bed of the truck a little bit and then I'm just going to have it all lumpy and bumpy and I'm going to have it kind of coming up into my sky a little bit and you could really have yours as bumpy as you want as filled as you want but that is all I'm going to be doing for my outline we will be using our medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your chalk away 
take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our truck and our bag. I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black and red paint. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with my tires and I, or my places where my wheels are gonna go, and I'm just painting those black. I'm bringing it all the way to the edge of my chalk mark, and I'm gonna paint right over that chalk mark. And if you don't get it perfect at this um, juncture, don't worry about it because we have, we have lots of steps to go where we will be, you know, manipulating this and having fun making all the details pop out and it's just a fun painting anyway, so it doesn't need to be perfect. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get this tire going. And again, just bringing it to my chalk mark. My chalk will um, bleed into my black. So if you have some areas that end up a little bit lighter because your, your chalk has turned your black paint a little gray, that is okay, no worries about that because we're gonna be putting some gray highlights on our tires anyways. And if they're not perfectly round, like mine are not perfectly round, I'm okay with that. And then I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm doing my bag next. I'm going to start my bag down at the bottom with black paint. So I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to put this black paint in here. What this is in essence gonna do is kind of give us uh, the start of our shadowy area at the bottom of this bag. And it's also gonna help us visually keep the bag separate from the truck. So now I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just picking up red paint and I'm going to finish painting in my bag. So I'm starting of course at this left hand side and I'm just gonna work my way towards the right hand side going all the way to my um, chalk mark, bringing it all the way out. And then as I get towards the top of the um, bag, I did just wipe my brush off on my paper towel to release some of that black paint. If you still had a lot of black paint on your brush, you'll wanna either wipe it off or just, um, you could wash it and dry it if you wanted to, but I didn't, I didn't need to do much. I don't mind if it's, there's a little bit on my brush, but I wanted to make sure that it had a good amount of red paint in through here. And again, I'm just bringing it all the way to the edge of my bag. And you can have a really thick layer of red. It can be, you know, whatever intensity that you want. And again, we'll be doing highlights and shadows and all kinds of good stuff later to make it look more realistic. And then I'm just going to paint the rest of the truck red. So this is gonna be one of those times where you just kind of want to go a little bit slower around your edges just to make sure that you you know can keep those clean edges if you want to but again just know that we are going to be um, doing all kinds of other things on top of this red paint so if your edges aren't perfect or if part of your truck looks a little bit bigger than it should look don't worry we're gonna have a blizzard we can hide a whole lot of stuff with with the, the the snow blizzard that's gonna happen. So I'm just bringing my red all the way to the edges. I'm leaving my windows without um, red paint. Those are gonna be the areas where we'll, we'll see the background or the landscape through them. And we also need to be able to have a place where we're gonna see Santa in our in our truck. So he's gonna occupy this this side window in a little while, but right now just kind of getting these areas in. And of course I slow down just a little bit around those edges so I can make sure that I bring them as far as I want to. And if you have a little bit of chalk that is still visible, don't worry. You can either erase that with a little bit of water in a little while, um, or we'll be covering it up with all of our other details. And red is a, translucent color so you will most likely especially when you get into the area that I'm getting into right now you'll be able to see through that red paint which means you'll be able to see the the paint that's behind it and the colors that are behind it and if that is uh, happening to you again we're gonna have lots of other stuff on top of this we have lots of steps to go so don't worry about any um, 
areas that might look a little bit lighter or darker or streaky at this point because we'll we'll be covering those up and then once you've got your entire truck painted in with the red paint you can of course make any adjustments for the outline or for the shape of the truck that you want but we will be utilizing our large paintbrush for the next step. So you're just gonna wanna get this red all the way to the edges, bring it all the way to your tire, and of course, you know, if there's little spaces in between, that's all right. Just slowing down here, getting this back bumper in through here, because I wanna have a little bit of that shape on the back of the truck. And then I am going to put my medium brush away. I will take out my large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint ourselves some pine trees. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. This is gonna be the base coat. We'll put the snow on later. I'm gonna use black and green paint. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have them in a variety of sizes. I'm gonna have um, a really big one in through here, and then I'm gonna have them progressively get smaller so it looks like they're getting farther and farther away. So I'll have my smallest ones up in through here, I'll have a couple of medium ones over here, and then a really big one here. So for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some what I call place markers, <laughs> or we can call them tree trunks if you want to. I'm gonna put just a little bit of green and black on my brush. The reason why I do this is so I can, in my own head, not get out of control because um, as I'm painting sometimes I just go wild and things get bigger than I want them to so I like to make myself a couple of markers first so I'm gonna make a little bit of a tree trunk in through here so I'm just really giving myself a skinny tall line I'm gonna do the same thing on here I'm gonna do a couple over in through here and I am kind of saving room I'm gonna have like this frosty look around the exterior of my canvas later. So I am kind of leaving a little bit of edges to account for that. I'm gonna have another one in through here. Maybe this one is gonna be just about as tall as that one. And then I'm gonna have a really big one down in through here. And again, this just kind of gives me my, my idea of where I want them. And then as I go to paint the, um, the pine, branches on here, I'm really going to be using the side of my brush and kind of just dotting the left and the right side. You can kind of use these little swooping type of motions, but I'm trying to give it the shape of a triangle, which is the common shape for pine trees, and I'm going to alternate my green and my black. So right now I'm going to start with a little bit of black paint on my brush, and I like to squish my brush on the side of my palette so that way it'll bring my bristles together so I can control it, especially on these smaller trees. And then I'm just gonna kind of dot down this like triangular type of shape for this particular tree. And then I'll do the same thing for this one over here. I'll pick up a little bit of green in a minute. Um, the, the detail on these smaller ones doesn't have to be anything um, special because again we'll be using some snow on top of them later but this just gets that shape on it. I just picked up a little bit of green on my brush to get the evergreen color into these trees and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for these ones over in through here. So just kind of using the the edge or the the tip of my brush to get these this shape within here. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint so I can have a diversity in the colors. So I'll have a little bit of light stuff, a little bit of dark stuff, and have these edges just um, kind of in a chaotic little way so they look nice and natural. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And I think one of the biggest things for me on these pine trees is just to make sure that I, I don't have a super evident trunk going down the middle. So that's why I, I like to dot down the middle on these bigger ones um, and just kind of expand those branches as they're coming out. I'm gonna pick up some green now and just kind of dot in some green on here. And I do know that as these colors dry, they will get a little bit darker. So I definitely plan for that, but the um, when we put the snow on them later, it, they're gonna look really nice and natural. And I'm just kind of bringing this right down to the ground 
so we don't see that trunk underneath. And then I have this big one over here. So this one may end up um, partially going off of my canvas. I know that, again, I'm going to have the, um, the that frostiness around the edge of my canvas later, so I don't necessarily have to worry about um, this being perfect at the bottom, but I definitely want this one to look nice and close. So I am going to bring this really far out on both sides, just picking up some more black paint here. I'll introduce the green in a minute, but I know that um, with it being closer to us like this, the um, the details of it will be more evident. So I'm going to bring a couple of pieces over that road edge. I think I'm going to pick up some green now and get this to intermingle with the with the black paint a little bit. So when I'm doing the larger ones, when I know that more of the detail is going to be evident, that's when I will kind of leave spaces for the green so they don't so I don't over blend them. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel right now because I don't want to start over blending these colors. So I wiped it off and then I just picked up a little bit more green. You could certainly kind of skirt your brush um, like in this type of brush stroke as opposed to just doing the dots. So if you feel that uh, doing this kind of down and out type of brush stroke works better for you, feel free to do that if you feel like that's going to give you um, a better look that, it, that you're more comfortable with. No, no worries. And just remember, you're going to have a ton of snow on top of this later, which will completely change the look of it and make it nice and filled in and have a lot of dimension and diversity to it. So just enjoy this process, get it to be as full as you want to be. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put the large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to put Santa Claus inside our truck. Of course, you could put whoever you want, but I'm gonna put good old Saint Nick. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using red, black, white, and yellow for my um, details, and I'll call them out as I'm gonna use them. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using a tiny bit of black paint and I'm gonna water it down. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water in my black paint with my small brush. I'm gonna put my steering wheel on first. So I want my steering wheel to be somewhere in this vicinity on the right side of this window in through here. So I'm just gonna put a little diagonal kind of line in through here. And then I'm going to have my um, steering wheel itself, just kind of something like this. I'm going to have some mittens on top of it in a minute. So if it doesn't go perfect, don't worry about it. We can hide it with some mittens and you can put these little spokes coming out of it if you want to. Then I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. And while that's drying, I'm going to go and put some some stuff over on Santa's side here. So I wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna start by putting a circular area for his face so we can have some skin color. So I made this color right here, which is like a peachy kind of color with a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, and a touch of white, and I spun it together. We don't, we're gonna see very little bit of his skin, so you don't need to make a ton of this. We're really just going to give the illusion that we're seeing some skin. So I've got that color going on in through there, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself an oval type of shape on the left-hand side of this window. So if this is halfway in the window, I'm just gonna put myself a little kind of oval circle type of shape in through here. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm gonna put on some red, areas so I wash and dry my brush and the red areas are going to be for his clothing so I'm and his hat so I put red paint on my brush I know I'm going to have a beard coming on in through here but in the interim I know that he has to have a little bit of a sweater or something on his on his um, 
shoulders and his back. So I'm just bringing a little bit of red, almost like a, in a little triangular type of shape in through there. I want to have a hat on here too. And my hat is going to be pretty darn big. I will put a white um, fluffy rim on it in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of getting the hat in place. So I've got that. Um, then I'm going to bring this back in through here. It's going to have a little white pom-pom on it too. But right now, again, just kind of getting the hat in shape. So I have somewhere to, to work from in a minute here. So I've got the hat. Now, I'll maybe bring this out just a little bit further and fuller. Yeah, that, that works out for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and put on his arms. So again, I know I'm going to have some mittens and a big beard to contend with. So really, I'm just going to put a little sliver of red in through here. And we're going to be putting details around the edge of our truck as well. So this is just going to give you the illusion that we have an arm in through here, maybe a little sliver of the red coming over in this direction as well. And if you felt you'd want a little bit in through here to imply the there's another arm that's going to be um, holding on to the other side of the steering wheel. This just gives you the illusion of that. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to put the um, gloves on. So washing and drying my brush. I'm going to put white paint on my small brush. And for my gloves, I'm just going to be putting this um, almost like an oval shape for the front part of where his fingers would be and then maybe a little thumb in through there and then on this side I can put a little um, bumpy part where the fingers are in through here and of course you might find that you want to make yours bigger or smaller than mine you can certainly have fun with that I'm gonna have a little thumb up in through here I think this one needs to be a little bit bigger make this one a little bit bigger just so we don't leave the other one out as, a, as bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to put his beard and the fluffy parts on the hat. So I'm not just going to use white here. I'm going to use white with a touch of either brown or black. I really am just looking for a diversity in my white. So I put white and then you can pick up a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of brown just so you have um, a little diversity in the color. So I'm going to do this for the little pom-pom on the hat. So the, um, the white will definitely act as fluffiness to it, but utilizing the other colors are gonna give you the little bit of diversity. I'm gonna put a little, um, the fluffy part on the end of the, the hat, covering his forehead in through here. It's gonna be really big and come right down to his, the, the back of his neck. So I've got this coming on in through here. I need to give him a beard. So I'm going to make this a really big beard and it's going to cover the majority of his face. I think I need to reload my brush just so I have a little bit more control on the tip of it. So I'm going to give the mustache part up in through here and then I'm going to give a really big beard part coming down and it's going to occupy this whole area in through here. I'll put a little mouth and some um, shadow underneath the the hood or the the hat in a minute but right now just kind of getting the beard on here utilizing a little bit of brown and black to make sure that I've got um, a little bit of diversity in there leaving a tiny area where I'm going to put my mouth in a second and of course you can have your beard as fluffy as you want to that's going to be a personal decision on your part and of course we'll put more um, information on the truck too so along the edges don't worry about that being perfect right now because we got snow and stuff like that to go so right now I'm just going to wash and dry my brush I'm going to put a little bit of shadow underneath the edge of the hat and maybe back in through here. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm going to put a little tiny shadow underneath this hat so that way it, it will allow it to look like it's got a little bit of dimension and we won't have to worry about putting um, too much information in the face because it's really just being shadowed by this really cool hat. So I'm going to put a whole bunch in through there. I'll put some black 
paint back in through here so it looks like there's shadow all from his beard onto his shirt maybe. Maybe we'll put a little bit of shadow underneath the back, the bottom side of the hat back in through here. So I'm just playing with the dark colors just to um, give it a little bit of dimension. Maybe we'll put a little bit in where his mouth is or you could I suppose put a little bit where, where you think the eyes would be if you wanted to, but I'm not really putting a whole heck of a lot. I'm just pretending like that. Um, hat is hiding his face. If you wanted to, you could pick up a tiny bit of red paint and just put a little tiny bit of red paint in where you think that the mouth would be, but I'd be cautious not to make him look like he's got too big of, um, you know, Santa lips going on. Just a little tiny bit would, would do fine. Of course, I just took it all away with my, there we go. And then um, just making sure I've got a little bit extra white on here. And then you just kind of keep tweaking these little things until you feel like you've got um, some good dimension on them. If you need to put more red on the hat, put more red on the hat. But once we put all the details on the um, truck, the little details on Santa will, you won't really need as many. They'll just kind of fade off into, into the background. So we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got Santa on here and you're digging the way that he looks, you can put this small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the shadow underneath our truck and finish our wheels or our tires. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, red, and white. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do my shadow underneath first. I don't need a lot of paint and I don't need to do a lot of work. I'm really just gonna be rubbing in some darkness underneath the truck. So I'm gonna be using brown with a touch of black on my brush and I'm just gonna be going back and forth, left to right, right underneath this truck. I want it to appear darker than the regular ground. So if you need to use a little bit more black, feel free to do so. And it doesn't necessarily need to go all the way black. So if you want it to you know, look more like a shadow, you'll want that color to be a little bit translucent and less, um, it does not have to be exactly black, black. I'm gonna put a little bit underneath this rear end of the truck and through here. And then I'll put some underneath this front end of the truck. So again, we know that this is, he's traveling at night <laughs> seemingly. So it doesn't have to, um, there wouldn't be a ton of shadow per se, but there maybe there's some moonlight that is casting a little bit of light in the night's air. So adding these little tiny details or these little nuances can just make it look more three-dimensional, getting it to um, look like it's more alive. So you, you know, this is one of those things not totally necessary to do, especially since it's nighttime, but if you want there to be that extra little oomph of dimensional element to it, you can certainly go ahead and add something like this. And there'll be headlights on the front of the front of the truck, so maybe that would cast a little bit of a shadow underneath. So my wheels, I'm going to, I didn't wash my brush, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush, and I'm gonna give the exterior part of the um, the tires just a little bit of a gray type of look. I just picked up a little bit of black, so I'm gonna just kind of go around this exterior part of my tire with a little bit of the remnants of that black and brown, plus a touch of white. And again, I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, just kind of getting this exterior area of the tires to have a little bit of lightness and a little bit of life to it. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of red paint without washing my brush. And I'm gonna do almost like an accent kind of color uh, in a circular type of motion within the um, kind of interior part of the tire. So just a little bit of red paint on my brush. Again, this is just one of those things. I'm kind of just decorating the truck that I feel the, the way that I feel that Santa would, would have it, but you could, you maybe you want to eliminate the red around the tires or do whatever you'd like to do. And then I'm just going to wash my brush. I want to put a little kind of hubcap in the center of these tires. So I'm going to wash and dry it. I'm going to put 
a tiny bit of white and brown on my brush at the same time and give myself a little bit of a circular shape in through here. I'm not going to bring it all the way to the red. I'm just going to kind of bring it pretty darn close and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just a little bit of a round type of object and you, I'm going to, I just washed my brush so I can kind of clean up the edges. My circle got a little away from me so I just picked up a little bit of black just kind of cleaning up around those edges with looks like a little bit of gray, which is totally fine by me. And then I'm going to stick a little bit of white on my brush just to give myself a little highlight on these hubcaps. And then we're going to wash and dry this brush and get ready to use it for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint our wheel wells and our bumper. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are black, red, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of outline where I want the the wheel wells to go and then what I'm going to I'm going to put the little front bumper in here and kind of this is also a wheel well that we're kind of seeing the top part of it where the where the light is going to go and stuff. So I'm going to start with black and red on my brush at the same time and I'm going to give myself kind of an outline where I want this to go. So this little bump in through here is kind of, is the back side of the wheel well. I might have called it a bumper earlier but <laughs> it's part of the wheel well. <laughs> so I'm going to um, make myself like a curved line but I want to be conscious of where this is going to go. So this, in essence, when we put the door on, is going to come straight down in through here. So my wheel well is going to be just behind that. So I have black and red on my brush, and I'm staying a little bit away from my tire. And I'm going to make this um, back area kind of arc and meet in through here. So once I have that on there, I want to just kind of blend that line into the body of the truck. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and picked up a little bit of red to get this um, this outline to just kind of blend in with the truck itself. I think I need to wash my brush so I can get some of that black off of there and then just kind of get this to blend in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other wheel well. So black with a little bit of red on my brush. So again, this door is going to come down in through this vicinity. So that's where I want my wheel well to go. So I've got the black and the red on my brush and I'm doing this in an arcing fashion. This one's going to come a little bit further over into here because we also have a light that goes on top that'll be in on the front part of this um, section of the vehicle. So I'm going to bring that in through there and then just kind of bring this back in through here. So trying to keep it in a, a, a nice continuous type of arcing motion and then just kind of blend it out into the red area. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, red with a tiny bit of black paint. This is going to almost be outlining the hood, but this is the wheel well over here. So just kind of putting that little bit of darkness and I'm going to blend it out with a little bit of red. So that just tells you where it is. I'm going to have my bumper in through here. So again, just a little bit of red and black on my brush. I'm going to have um, this kind of looking almost like a round V type of shape. So I'm going to go up just about as high as my tire is on this side and then just bring this down in a kind of arcing V type shape of motion and then I'm going to bring maybe one more down in through here just to give myself a little bit of information for those and then maybe I'll put a little bit of this darkness near the the front bumper part and I'll put a little bit of a highlight in a minute but just want to kind of get this on here. I'm going to also bring a little bit of darkness up this front part of this wheel well in through here just so I can have a little bit of shadow as it's going and dipping underneath or um, down by the bottom side of the of the vehicle. So now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a second layer of paint on these wheel wells and on the bumper. So I'm going to start with red paint on my brush. Just this is going to ensure that I have a nice good coverage on the on the paint itself knowing that 
red is translucent. So I, this is gonna ensure that I have a nice good coverage. And after I get the red on here, I will stick a little bit of white as a highlight to imply the shape of these um, particular objects. I know that the roundness of the outline around it is gonna start to tell the story of it being round, but the highlight will help that as well. And again, we're gonna have snow on these that will help to change or tell the story as well, but right now just getting this red paint to make sure that it is a nice solid color for myself. And now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint. You may want to wash your brush, you may not want to wash your brush. It's gonna to be totally up to you. I'm just gonna kind of give these a, a nice kind of highlight around the rounded part of them. You don't have to make it very bright. You don't have to make it um, super invasive. Just go with whatever is feeling natural to you. And if you feel like you went too light, just bring back some of that red. This is going to allow this piece to kind of pop out in front of the rest of the truck. So if you know you might be comfortable making it really bright or you might want it to stay dark. So wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. And then we're going to utilize this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your um, your wheel wells and your bumper done, we are going to, um, oh, gotta put this little highlight in through here. So a little bit of red and white, I thought I was done. I always think I'm done and then I'm like, oh wait, I forgot this little part in through here. So a little bit of the highlight in through here and you can get this one to go pretty darn bright because this is gonna be the front of the truck that's gonna show a lot of information. You could even make this part a little silver if you wanted to. So if you wanted to put wash and dry your brush, you could put black and white on your brush, make it a little gray kind of color, and just make it um, a little bit more of like a chrome type of look to it. You could throw some blue in it if you wanted to. Totally up to you, wherever your comfort zone is. And I think I think that's all I want to do on that part. Then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the body of the truck and the bag. I'm using my medium brush. I'm gonna use black, red, and white paint. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be making some outlines where I want my door and my little handle, my little ribbon on my bag, and any other dark details that I want. And then I will do the same thing that we did with the wheel wells and the bumper, which is making sure the red is a nice coat. And then we add a little highlight and we'll be done. So I'm gonna load my brush with a little bit of watered down black paint. And again, I'm just taking it and kind of spinning it on the side of my palette so I can have a nice pointy brush. And of course you could utilize your smaller brush too to have these details. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna um, give myself an outline around my door and bring it all the way down to um, the, the base of the cab or the base of the, the side of the truck. I'm gonna leave it a little bit away from the red edge of the door just so it gives it a little bit more um, dimension and has a little bit more information to it. So just bringing it in through this area and then just bringing it down in through here. And then I'm gonna bring these almost down to, to the bottom in through here. I need to have a little step where um, Santa's gonna step up on the, on the side of uh, the truck so he can get into the truck. So something like this, maybe we'll come across like this so there's a little step. And then I'm gonna have a little edge to my, where my, the edge of the, the door is. So just put in a little dark line in through there. I'm gonna have a little doorknob. So I'm gonna go ahead, give myself a little place for my doorknob. Just reloading my brush with black paint. I'm going to outline the hood of the car right up here where it's meeting the, um, the windshield itself. And of course you don't need to worry about perfect lines because we're gonna have that snowstorm happen in a little while. I'm gonna put an outline around these windows. I'm gonna put just a little black outline between them and then just kind of bring this, this line over to the left. And of course you could have it right up to the edge or you know a little away, whatever is visually appealing to you. This is just a nice vintage kind of truck that I'm kind of modeling off of, you know, 
lots of different trucks and so it's not one specific truck so if you want to make yours a little bit modified feel free to do so and then let's see what else am I going to do here I don't really need anything else down there with the black I'm going to put a little ribbon to tie my package to my big bag together so I've got just black paint on my brush going to bring a tie in through there and maybe just have a couple of little pieces of it coming out in through here. Maybe there's a little knot or something. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush, just making sure I don't have any additional pieces of information I want in through here. I think that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put my red and my highlights throughout the, throughout the rest of the truck. So I just washed and dried it. I'm going to pick up some red, make sure I have a nice good coverage on this hood area in through here and this is just helping me to make sure wherever it was a little translucent I can make sure that I'm getting a nice full coverage I'm going to do the same thing on the roof of the cab so just making sure that I have a nice full coat throughout there maybe bring some of this red back down in through here this is going to be a great area for my snow to take place in through here. I've got lots of detail around this windshield. I'm going to put some more red on my brush, make sure I've got this, the bed of the truck, uh, bringing it right up to the edge of that bag. So it makes sure that we have full, full coverage in through there. And then I'm going to um, do the same thing with the red on the bag in a second. But right now, just making sure that I've got all of my edges taken care of, that this red really covers well throughout the whole um, truck. Now I'm just going to carry this red up in through here, making sure that I've got a lot of this vibrancy throughout this bag. If you wanted to leave some of those darker areas, or just get them to fade in that's awesome that'll make it look like it's got some lumps and bumps inside that bag with all those cool presents that are waiting to be delivered making sure I've got a little bit of this vibrant red up in through here and then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white paint and put some strategic highlights in through here I know the top of my hood is going to be covered with snow so I really don't need to do much there the um or the top of the cab, the hood in through here. I might have some lightness in through here because I'm gonna have a big um, light <laughs> on the front of my um, on the front of my truck. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lightness in through here, which will help to sell the story of that beautiful bright light that's being cast by the um, wonderful light we'll be putting in a little while. I'm going to put a little bit of this highlight. Again, I've got red and white on my brush right now. A little bit of a highlight maybe down along the sides of the doors, maybe down along here. And of course, you can certainly have fun with as much of these highlights as you want. Maybe you want a whole bunch. Maybe you just want a, a couple here and there. Again, we're going to be disguising a lot of this with snow so <laughs> this is really just kind of giving you that extra bit of information I do want to put a handle on here in a minute but right now just kind of having fun adding some strategic little highlights to show the shape and the form of the of the truck yeah this is this is looking good to me I like painting these um, these fun you know holiday type of characters with these you know, automobiles that they travel in or their mode of transportation. It's just a lot of fun to do so. And then I'm going to um, just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I want to give a little doorknob or some kind of um, shininess to this, this handle of sorts. So I just put some white with maybe a touch of brown on my brush and just giving a little tiny highlight in through there. And then you can sit and fiddle all you want. And we are going to be utilizing our large paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got your highlights on here, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put snow on our trees, our truck, and our bag. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using blue and white paint to do this. So I really want these trees to look like they're cold and they've got maybe some shadows on them. So I'm gonna be utilizing blue with my white to add that dimensional kind of element to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm picking up a little bit of my blue 
and a touch of white paint on my brush at the same time, I'm going to have more of the darker blue on the right side of these trees and more white on the left side of the trees. So when I do this, I'm going to be using that a, a tapping type of technique to add this snow on here, but I am very mindful that I want to um, keep some of that original tree evident with the with the black and the green. So I'm not going to overdo it. I'm just really kind of tapping it in here. You can have yours as blue as you want or as white as you want, but I'm going to cross it over that center area a little bit and then move on to my next tree with this blue and white um, color on my brush. I will come back to the left side in a minute, but this is just going to be kind of an expedited way to to get the snow on here without having to wash your brush too many times. So again, I'm using that blue and white on the right side of the trees and I'm bringing it all the way up to the top and then just kind of tapping it down along the side but still maintaining some of that green and black underneath. Now what I'm gonna do is without washing my brush, whoops, I had a little red in my, in my paint palette. So I picked up just white with my dirty brush and now I'm going to put more snow on the left hand side using my dirty brush with white. So this is going to give you an illusion of the right side of that tree being more kind of in the shadows and again you can see as I'm doing this I'm not over painting it. I am kind of keeping a, to me a representational way for these pine trees kind of like diagonally down and out. I am making sure that I cross over that center area of the tree so it's not just blue on the right and left or white on the left and I am crossing the tree over or putting a little bit of snow you know in on the edges past that tree a little bit so it gives it some more of a dimensional kind of element making sure I've got some good stuff at the top of the tree because I like to have a lots of snow sitting at the tops of my trees because I feel that that's where it would sit the most. And then I'm going to go ahead, I just reloaded my dirty brush with a little bit more white paint so I can tap it into these smaller trees. And of course the smaller trees you don't really need to give as much attention to because they are in fact smaller and there's less detail to them. That one I think I overdid a little bit so we'll bring a little bit of blue back there we go and then I'll go ahead and do this one over into here and again if you if you do feel like you overdid any just kind of let it dry for a minute then you can come back with any of those original colors but I again I'm just kind of utilizing my dirty brush with a little bit of extra white on it so I have the remnants of the blue on there in addition to the white paint and then when I go to do my truck I, you can still utilize your dirty brush if there's still a little bit of blue paint on there. Just wipe it off on your paper towel. Pick up some white paint and I'm going to put the majority of this snow at the top of the pieces of the truck as well as the left side of my bag because to me if he's driving this way the snow would be accumulating on the front side and the top of the objects. So I'm going to just kind of tap in some accumulated snow wherever I feel like it would make the most sense to to be piled up and of course you if you want to put yours in other places feel free to do so. Maybe there's a little bit on the um, on these little strings in through here and in through here and I just kind of keep turning my brush so I have you know different types of brush strokes or marks throughout the throughout the areas I feel like I'd have a bunch on the front of the truck in through here just accumulated on the top and then maybe it just kind of comes down a little bit and again just have fun with this this is there's no rules as to how how much snow you need to have on your truck if you want a lot awesome if you want a little great you just put as much as you want to I'm gonna pile it up really kind of heavy along this front edge in through here just making sure it looks like maybe he's been traveling for a while <laughs> and he's he's accumulated a bunch of snow on the front of that truck so you can again have have as much fun with this as you want. I am kind of getting it to get a little bit thinner as it goes away from you know my initial pile, whatever that may may look like for you is totally fine. Putting a little on here, maybe I'll put a little 
over in through here. And again, I'm just kind of having fun with it, making it feel like, you know, I, I envision it like it would sit on this little front bumper area in through here. And this is a great time to, um, you know, add snow wherever you did something that you weren't totally happy with it. Just use that snow to your advantage and let it let it kind of disguise any little areas that you feel would warrant disguising. <laughs> and maybe I'll put a little bit in through here as if it's piling up on this little step stool type of area. Maybe I'll put some in through here like it's sitting on this this wheel well over in through here, kind of dripping down in through here. And then of course I'm gonna put some on the truck bed, the top of that. So it, it not only gives us a visual um, delineation between the bag, but it also, you know, tells the story of how long he's been out on the road delivering presents today. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your snow accumulated in as many cool areas as you would like, you can uh, put this large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting ourselves a set of antlers and Rudolph's red nose on the front of our Santa truck. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use that skin color that I created for his face. I'll also use black, white, and red and maybe a little yellow too, but I'll call them out as, as I go ahead and use them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of separate out where I want my red nose to go. So I'm adding a little bit of watered down black paint onto my brush. I want this truck to look like it's, you know, at an angle, so I'm gonna have the nose a little bit to the left of the center of the truck. So if you go about halfway between this area and this area, right about there, and go directly down, I am about, right about here is gonna be the right hand side of the nose. And I'm gonna, I'm only gonna have the bottom is gonna be about as low as the top of my tire. So I can come over here from my tire and that's about as low as I want it. And then I'm, oops, I almost lost my blow dryer there. Um, and then I'm gonna bring it over to this left hand side. I would say right about in through here. So I'm just kind of creating myself like the outside edge to where I want this, this nose to go. And with the black paint, I am giving it what will look like a shadow around the nose once we've got all of the um, the lights on. Once I've got that um, kind of outlined, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red paint just to soften the edges so it kind of blends into the truck itself. So just on the exterior side of that um, marking that I made. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because we're going to be adding um, the vibrancy of the of the light in a minute. So I'm just kind of just kind of getting this to blend in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my small brush and we'll put our antlers on. So I'm washing and drying my small brush and I'm going to be using that skin color that we had created for Santa's nose. And if you need to make any more, it was uh, red, yellow, and a little bit of white paint making sure it just is like maybe a, a light peachy kind of color. This will be the color that I'm using as my base coat for my antlers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them coming out the left and right side of here. I'm gonna have them coming up about mid height into my window, this left hand window up and through here. So you can even kind of give yourself a little bit of a marker there. And then on the left hand side, I want it just about as high and I'm gonna be just a little bit in from the edge of my um, my wheel wheel in through here. So I go a little bit to the right of that and straight up and I'm at about the same height as here. And those will be the, the tallest points of my, of my antlers. And then I just kind of have fun with making myself this, you know, um, structure that resembles the antlers on a reindeer or on a regular deer or whatever kind of deer you would like it to, to resemble. You can have lots of little points coming out. 
Um, the sides, it can be a really big rack of antlers. It can have many different places that shoot out whatever is comfortable for you and is as representational as you would like it to be. I'm just kind of getting this side in and I'll go ahead and do the other side in a second, just making sure I've got as many um, little pieces coming up as I want to. And then I'll go ahead and I'm gonna do the left hand side. So this one again, I'm gonna have coming out the left hand side of this nose and then I'll just kind of get it to go up in this direction. Of course, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. I mean, antlers come in all different directions and sizes and with different, you know, types of points coming out of them. They kind of re remind me of like branches to a tree. So you could certainly have yours in whatever, you know, style that you would like. Maybe I've got another one coming out in through here. And then once I've got them on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a little highlight on the tip of my nose. So wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint and this is gonna give me the glow at the end of my nose in through here. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of red paint. So I've got the white as the, as the center kind of bright area and then I blend it out into the, the darker red region on the outside of the nose. You're really just looking to try and get a, a nice bright spot uh, on, the, on the, we'll call it the headlamp or the light. So you can have it as bright as you want, but the brighter it is, the more that it glows. We will be putting a glow around it in a little bit, but this is just telling you that it is lit up We've got the brightest spot in the middle, and if you wanted to, you could certainly add a little bit of yellow to this light, but um, it might not be terribly necessary for you. Once you've got that on there, then you're just gonna add uh, little shadows onto your antlers. So I'm picking up some watered down black paint, and I'm gonna put little shadows along the predominantly the right side of these pieces of my antlers. This will help them to um, stick out in front of the truck a little bit more so they don't get lost in the, um, the background. And then we'll put a little bit of snow on them in a minute. So just a little bit of a dark outline on these right hand sides. And then once I've got that on there, if you felt that you needed to add any more of that original um, base color to them, feel free to do so. Then I'm gonna just wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of snow sitting on some of the tips. So I've got some white on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of put these little clumps of snow sitting on the edges. Maybe this one has some on the, uh, you know, just sitting on the side of it. We've got some down here. Wherever you feel that the snow would, would accumulate and would sit, again, this is gonna help the viewers see the edges of these antlers. So it not only provides you with, you know, fun information, but it also lets the viewer be able to see it better. And then we are going to be utilizing this uh, same brush for the next step. So once you've got your light and your antlers on, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're going to be putting our headlights on and we're gonna be putting the glow from the headlights and the nose that's sitting in the front. So I did notice that um, after I was done putting my snow on the rest of the truck that I forgot I wanted to put some snow on the little doorway here. So before I start this step, I'm gonna put a little snow on this doorway in through here. So I just put a little bit of white paint on my brush and I'm gonna add a little bit of snow in through here. And I also do wanna forewarn you that before we start this next step with the um, headlight, headlights and the glow that you want to make sure this front region is nice and dry so that you know just whip out your blow dryer or take that extra long break if you'd like to but you want to have it dry it'll be a much easier process for you so i'm going to do my head lights first i'm going to be using my small brush i'm going to be using white and yellow paint on my brush at the same time i'm going to have my headlights 
kind of in this in a row with the nose of um, of the truck <laughs> so I'm gonna be doing mine somewhere in through here so I want this to look like it's just glowing so I'm gonna use this really fun just swirly type of motion I will come back and um, vamp up the center light in a minute but right now I'm just starting with the yellow and the white on my brush to to get them in motion so I just want to make sure that I kind of have this in in a good vicinity in through here so I'm going to put this on right in through here and then I just kind of keep swirling my brush out until it's the glow is about as big as I want it to be and then I'll take a little bit more white on my brush and go back in towards that center so you might find that you may need to let it dry for a minute in order to get this brightness to to happen in the center but um, you know whatever method you need to do in order to get it as bright as you want feel free to do that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding uh, like a glow around here so I'm going to just wash and dry my brush and I'm actually going to be using a little bit of watered down white paint. So I washed and dried my brush and I'm adding a little bit of water into my paint. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a very translucent appearance to um, what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna add this almost like a fogginess around this light lamp or light in through here. So this is where if you um, if your background was still wet with paint, you might run into a little bit of trouble, but if you can kind of just utilize a little bit of water on your brush with the white paint, you'll get this glow or fogginess or haziness that's going to look like it's coming out of the lamp itself. And then once I have that, I'm going to start pulling out beams of light. So yellow and white is what's going to be on my brush plus water and I'm going to from the center of my lamp in through here I'm going to pull out these I need a little more water on my brush I'm going to pull out these beams of light so I like to use water on my brush when I'm doing something like this because it will allow me to have these translucent type of streaks throughout um, this and it'll make it look a little bit more natural to me. I'm going to have them going up from here. I'm going to have them splaying all out. Think of it like, you know, just what does a light do? Where is all that, you know, its luminescent value is being, you know, dispersed throughout. So you could use the yellow and the white if you wanted to. I'm going to take a little bit of red as well. So the red maybe from this beautiful red nose will be, um, you know, coming out as well. So you can certainly use a little, I don't think I said I was going to use red, but you certainly could if you wanted to. I'm going to wash and dry my brush, put a little bit more maybe white and yellow, and you just kind of keep building these beams of light until you feel that you've got enough light coming out of the front of this truck that really makes sense and if you need to illuminate that center anymore feel free to do so and once you feel like you've got enough light coming out here you can keep amping up these little headlights if you want to and keep kind of adjusting the intensity of it but once you feel like you've got enough light coming out and it's definitely going to show Santa the way to wherever he is intended to go this festive evening we are going to be switching to our large brush I just picked up a little bit more yellow on my brush in through there just to get those yellow beams of light to come and show their face and then if you again if you want to tweak it anymore feel free to do so I'm going to be switching to my large brush for the next step so you can just put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna make it snow. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush, I'm gonna be using white paint, and how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have, I want it to kind of look like, uh, like a storybook, like we're kind of like peeking into this magical world. So I'm going to have the whole exterior really light and like frosty and then we'll 
sprinkle a whole bunch of snow all over the rest of the painting. So I'm going to start with quite a bit of white paint on my brush and I'm going to start by kind of tapping it along my edges, something like this, so I can really kind of get started with a pretty heavy type of snow or frost or whatever around the edges. And then as I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm letting myself kind of run out of paint, which is allowing for it to be whiter around the edges. And then it just kind of disperses and gets um, almost like framing the, the painting itself. So just kind of tapping this in here, making lots of noise as I do it. And it's also going to, and it's starting our snowstorm too. So as I'm doing this, I'm allowing for it to kind of get thinner as I'm coming into the, to the regular picture, but we'll be putting lots of snow in a minute. So I'm going to do the same thing all around these edges, just kind of tapping in a pretty heavy amount around around the exterior. And I'm going to go right in front of this tree. This is going to allow for a really cool effect to occur and just making sure I've got a good amount up in this corner in through here. And I'm just going to make it dissipate a little bit into the painting. So it's not just one solid line around the edges and doing the same thing down in through here. So it's heavier in the corners and right along the edges as it's, um, it meeting the painting and then it just kind of dissipates a little bit as it comes into um, the rest of the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over in through here. So bringing it pretty heavy. I think I want to move my canvas so I can reach the bottom down in through here. Pretty darn heavy along these bottom edges and then it's going to look really cool when it starts to frame the painting like this. And I'm just again kind of letting myself run out of paint as I'm getting it kind of softer and softer as it works its way towards the image itself. You could even kind of dry brush it a little bit if you want to just rub your brush a little bit that scrubbing type of scumbling motion that will allow it to kind of get thinner and thinner as it's going in towards the um, center of the painting and if you feel like you you know want to go in front of these other trees feel free to do so. And then once you've got that exterior kind of uh, identified and you've got that as much as you want, what I'll do is I'm going to utilize just kind of the remnants on this brush just to kind of get my snowstorm started with these little tiny speckly marks. And in a second, I'm going to do my little splatter snow that I want. If you want any little extra bits throughout your land. You can certainly add those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush a little bit in water. So I don't need much water on my brush. And then I'm going to pick up some white paint. And then what I do is I'm going to dab it on my paper towel and I'm going to start splattering. <laughs> so I'm going to use the tip of my finger and I'm going to flick it onto my canvas. So because I used a little bit of water on my brush, it allows me to have kind of this fluidity as it sprays out. And you might get some of those like long stringy marks when, when you do this, but if you do that, that's quite all right. You can, you know, roll with it like it's a, a big piece of snow just flying by, or you can, you know, work it out if you wanted to. I'm getting it to snow in front of everything, in front of my truck, in front of my road. I'm going to reload my brush because I'm out of snow making ability right now. So I reloaded my brush and I'm just going to kind of keep working until I have as much snow as I want. I mean, you can have millions of pieces of snow. You can have it a, a real blizzard happening. It's going to be a visual preference on your part. I really wanted this particular painting to have a lot of snow in it as if Santa's really working hard tonight going through a blizzard to make sure that he gets all of the presents delivered to all the kids and people who are deserving of such gifts. So I've got a lot of snow on mine and when you and I'm really dirty too. <laughs> so your room might be dirty as well if you've tried this um, method. But once you've got enough snow on your painting, we have one final little step left to go. And it's going to be I don't know if I'm ever going to stop making snow, but <laughs> it's going to be with our tiny brush. So 
snow making complete, you can put this big brush away, take out your small brush, and, and get ready for your next step. <laughs> All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna go bottom right on this one with my black paint. I sign my initials, but you could certainly sign your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun winter image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.